In this video, I will explain how to create the perfect flashcard set. The perfect flashcard set is a set of cards which allows you to learn faster and at the same time helps you to understand the topic better. I will do this in five parts. First, how to best collect all relevant information and put it into the cards. Second, why is the sequence of the cards important? Third, how to better formulate the questions for maximum memorization. Fourth, how to do this in the flashcard tool PAUK. And fifth, the process of optimization of the deck while learning. How to best collect all relevant information. Most important is to write down all relevant content and all these notes must end up in your flashcard tool with questions and answers. So take all your sources, most importantly, your notes from the study classes, but also other sources like Wikipedia, YouTube, you name it. Your notes from your study classes have a lot of value because in most cases, the test will be created by your teacher. So you must fit the flashcards to his style. Many students write first a summary with all the facts and later put it all in the flashcard tool. It's also possible to directly type all the facts in the flashcard tool. This may seem a bit chaotic, but not if the flashcard tool allows you to edit and sort the cards later on. This will enable you to create your summary directly in the tool. It will save you a lot of time. Why is the sequence of the cards important? We are not talking about foreign vocabulary. These cards should be randomly mixed. The sequence is important for complex topics, for which you will get an understanding only while you are learning it, like history, biology or chemistry, etc. These topics have a storyline, they are not random. If the overall topic is split into smaller pieces, these small pieces have a connection in between. So one flashcard is somehow connected to the next flashcard. This can be a time connection in history or a logical connection from one card to another to build the fundament for answering more advanced questions later. In the test you will also remember the storyline, which will help you to write down an article in a structured way without losing time, or to verbally express yourself logically in front of your examiner. At the very beginning, after collecting all data, you may still have a chaos in your flashcards and the parts don't fit together. You don't see all the connections and why some questions may be more important than others. However, you still can make your best guess and sort the cards in a for you logical sequence. You can always change this later. Let's make an example. You should be able to report on the great inventor Nikola Tesla. So the obvious question with lots of room for interpretation would be, who was Nikola Tesla? To put this answer with all its background in one question answer flashcard would make no sense. It's too broad for one card and the answer will be loaded with too many facts. You would not be able to learn it efficiently. The right strategy is to break it down in smaller isolated pieces. Let me also define for you the right number of facts which should be put in an answer. The optimal number of facts in an answer for me is 3. Of course I can blow it up to 8, but it's much harder to remember 8 in one attempt. If I have answers which require lots of facts, I always try to break it down to a number of about 3. Let's have a look how the sorting of card works in the tool. You open the card sorter here. And then you get a view about the cards and you can make the card smaller until you get the full overview over your deck. So now it's 35%. Uh, what you can do is with the mouse, you can uh, change the sequence of the cards wherever you want at the end or at the beginning. That's one possibility. Then another possibility, if you have uh, too much cards, of course, you can delete them. Or if you want to double a card, let's say you have formulated already a question which you want to use in the next card as well and edit them, you can double it. Uh, so here you have all the possibilities 
how to sort your cards and then you close it and again of course you can change the content of your cards in the editor. Card sorting and editing is also a process you will do while learning and at the same time realizing all the gaps and errors you still have in your flashcard decks. The editing of your deck will be a result of you making progress in your understanding of your topic.